Today on How to Loom Knit, we'll be working the garter stitch and learning how to prevent curling in your knits. We'll also have a pattern in here as well. This is lesson 6.0. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. Prevent knits from curling by combining knit and purl stitches and work the garter stitch. We're working a garter stitch by working a row of knit stitches and then a row of purl stitches to make this ridge here. See this one in the back here? You've got a row of knits with those V-shaped stitches and then you have this purl bump along here and it creates these ridges. You can even count by twos when you're counting your rows. It makes it really easy. You can just count all the ridges and say two, four, six, eight, and so on. Kind of cool. If you make it with a U-wrap or an E-wrap, the either one, um, it will make the garter stitch look the same. The only difference is it will be a little stretchier with an E-wrap and your stitches will individually be bigger, but it's actually pretty hidden. And there's a neat little shortcut to make it seem a little faster. However, you can uh, combine those knits and purls on just the border, which is a great basic skill to have. And you can use this for things like coasters like this one, all the way to a dishcloth or a blanket. And then you can create this middle space here. Uh, we call that the field or the middle uh, and do like a big stock and net area, or you can make any number of other stitch combinations and patterns. And then this border allows you to not have curling on the edges while having fun playing in the middle. So that's a really good thing to know. In this video here, I'm going to show you how to make this with a couple of notes on shortcuts. And then I'm also going to give you a pattern for a dishcloth. So stay tuned. And we're actually going to have two patterns in one in this video. What you're going to need is your yarn and your loom. If you want to make the coaster, I'm working with a super bulky number six weight yarn and I need 11 pegs on a large gauge loom. This one, when you measure from center peg to center peg, it's five eighths. And uh, I'm using this 24 peg five eighths gauge loom from KB Looms. You can also use the Nifty Knitter or one just like it. And then if you want to do the dishcloth, you can use a cotton yarn, which is a number four medium weight yarn. And then you're going to need 36 pegs of a small gauge loom. Uh, this is a three eighths size center peg to center peg. You're also going to need for both of these, of course, your loom hook. And you can use a crochet hook if you want to crochet cast on. And then you're going to need a couple of stitch markers. I'm just going to use these uh, nice little rubber bands. You do want to have two of them and uh, that's all you need. You can use a row counter uh, as well if you like or just a scratch paper to kind of note those things. The reason why I'm doing both of them at the same time is you can choose your project. You could even make the coaster first and come back when you're confident and make the uh, dishcloth, but they are made the exact same way. And I really want to teach you that many times these patterns, you can use them on different looms and make a similar fabric. It just has smaller or larger stitches. Let's begin. For the dishcloth, uh, I need to mention that we're using the knitting board loom. This is the premium knit loom, 72 peg. You can use uh, any other loom with uh, 36 pegs. It's small gauge. I just happen to be using this one because the color works well on camera. So let's go ahead and put our stitch markers on and I'm marking both of these looms at the same time. So either one you're working on is great. I happen to have some stretchy rubber bands and what I'm doing is marking the border edges. Okay, so where these edges are and I'm gonna get purl stitches for the main part of our pattern because we're gonna be uh, knitting this length for quite a while. Uh, there, These borders, when they're marked, it's really handy. You can also just mark the innermost peg. So you're going to cast on uh, this loom here, uh, one through 11. And then if you're working on the dishcloth, uh, mark the first four pegs, okay? And then count all the way to peg 36. And then you're gonna mark the last four pegs for your border here, okay? Let's do the cast on. For our cast on today, I'm using the chain cast on. You can use another cast on if you want, but I want you to see what the edge looks like. It has this really pretty detail combined with the knits and pearls. It comes off really well. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little reminder of what that looks like. Just go ahead and make your slip knot. And again, check our cast on video down below for more on slip knots and casting on. And we're just going to start on peg one. 
and start uh, in the direction that you want to be working your purl stitches and you're going to want to cast on that works all in one direction not where you're wrapping one way and wrapping back we want to work from um, right to left casting on if you want if you like to do your purls uh, from right to left and then uh, do the opposite if you are uh, a left-handed knitter okay so go around the first stitch here put our slip knot on our uh, hook and keep it loose you can also do this with just your fingers yarn over and pull through and yarn over and pull through and go ahead and cast on uh, all your stitches so 11 on the coaster or 36 on the dishcloth all right so pause your video and i will meet you back up when you cast it on all of your stitches see you in a moment all right so i'm going to put that last stitch on and we're ready to begin now this is where you can decide if you want to do e-wrap or you want to do a unit wrap i suggest if you have enough yarn do both you're going to make one sample in unit and one sample in e-wrap that's totally fine and that way you can have something to compare against again if you're going to have e-wrap the middle part is going to have this field on it rather than this field this is a field of u wrap knit stitches and this is a field of e-wrap so we'll have a little bit different look to it but your garter will be a little bit bigger because this is a bigger stitch and it's a little bit stretchier so um, keep that in mind all right so whatever knit stitch you're going to do go ahead and start working that you're going to work all stitches all the way across your row and um, don't uh, worry about any of the stitch markers you're just simply working all pegs all right so go ahead and work all pegs, pause your video right now, and I'll meet you back when you're ready. Okay, you come down to the end, and now we just want to purl stitch. So again, you just put your yarn below the loop and just pull upward, making a new loop, take it off, and put it back on, okay? And so you're just gonna keep repeating this all the way down to the end of your row. So one full knit row and one full purl row will make one ridge. You wanna make two ridges for this particular pattern for the coaster, and you're going to make six of them for the uh, dishcloth. So um, if you need to think about it this way, that's how many purl rows you're making. I wanna show you a shortcut if you are using the e-wrap stitch. Uh, it's a really easy way to create your um, your knit and purl rows almost simultaneously uh, because the yarn gets wrapped uh, and then you can uh, knit it off as you go it's a fun easy way to do it if you want to purl right after you knit it off i'll show you what i mean here in a moment i'm coming to a finish on this and of course if you need a reminder on the purl stitch please click down in the links below and you'll see that video for the purl okay so we're ready to begin a row and i want to go ahead and wrap this like i'm e-wrapping okay just wrap all the way down i do this with my right hand okay now i come to the end and normally i would knit off and start knitting off all my stitches you know one by one like that but if you want to just knit off that first one, bring your yarn to the front. You can purl that stitch, just as usual, and then come to the next stitch, knit it off, and then purl right after. So what that does is it just it just pushes that one stitch down below before right before you get to it, and then you can work the next one. So it's not technically doing them at the same time. It's not knitting one with new yarn and purling one with new yarns are not stacked on top of each other the yarn is already there from the previous row below so we can uh, just continue working it this way and make one ridge fairly quickly and then you will be ready uh, for continuing on your pattern so uh, continue doing this uh, pause your video and meet me back up after you completed um, two purl rows on your uh, coaster or six on your uh, dishcloth and your row six uh, six row ridges will look like this all right pause your video and i'll see you in a moment 
you completed the first part of your edge and now we're going to set up for doing the field or the middle with the two edges here so we're going to we've done this part and now we're going to be working on this part here so uh, you should have the working yarn at the opposite end as your uh, original tail and if you're not sure if you just completed a knit or purl row, you can always look on the back of your loom and pull back your stitches. And if you pull them back like this and see a V-shaped stitch, that means that you just completed a purl row because the opposite is this knit stitch. If this little bump right here is just snug right up against the back of your, uh, your loom or your peg, and you can't pull it back like this and reveal a knit stitch, then you have just knitted, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and do one more knit row and go all the way down and then I'll show you the purl row and how it's different. All right, this is where we need to do the edge stitches. We're going to purl the first two stitches on our coaster. So uh, all of the ones that are marked here, or if you're only using one stitch marker on the innermost, you're just going to purl until the innermost and continue on that one. So one, two, okay. And then you'll continue knitting until you get to your first stitch marker here. So you just work all the way up until just before that marker. So if this is E-wrap, of course, you're just going to E-wrap that and go all the way down. And if you're doing this shortcut, you can um, E-wrap till here, because if you E-wrap down here, then you wouldn't get that border stitch. So remember, stop at this mar marker here. You can go ahead and knit over just to kind of remind yourself. And then um, when you get to this area, you can um, purl. If you uh, want to do your um, shortcut, it doesn't work as well on here because you're just gonna be e-wrapping all the way down like this. And then, then you would do your stitches. So uh, now we're down here and when we do our purl, okay? So if you're on the uh, dishcloth, let me show you that one. There's that last stitch. And the dishcloth would just be working these stitches here, these four stitches. So put our yarn to the uh, top part and purl. So of course these are smaller. And so that's why we have uh, a wider amount for our border here. And then we did several more rows down on the bottom. Okay. And then just continue working your knit stitches all the way up until the next, uh, the next set of stitch markers. So work all the way down to here and stop your knitting right here and work these as a purl. All right, pause your video and I'll meet you back up at the end of that row. Okay, so these are instructions for the middle. You just completed one ridge, which is one row, and then your purl row, which is the garter ridge in the beginning of the edge, and then your main field stitch, and then you're uh, finishing with that purl. So that is uh, one set of ridges. So we want a total of six here on the coaster. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see that. So you're going to be completing essentially 12 rows. So a knit row, a purl row, and so on. So continue until you have about three inches, or if you wanna count that um, every time you've got a purl row, it's actually about six within here. You can use a, um, a measuring tape here and um, start working down here when you get to the three and uh, this knitting edge here gets to the one, then you've uh, got it about where you need to. That's for the coaster. For the dishcloth, you're gonna work 28 ridges or actually 56 rows total. You're gonna work about seven inches. Pause your video, when we back up, you'll have most of your knitting done and we'll do the final part of your pattern. See you in a moment. As you can see, we are ready to put on our final border. And uh, on the coaster, we're going to do two more ridges. And on the dishcloth, we'll do six more ridges. Now, if you look at this, you might quickly see that it looks like I actually have three ridges. That's not the case. Let me remind you that this is actually the cast on. It's not actually your pearl 
row. So you had a knit row right after the cast on, and then you had a purl, and then a knit and the purl. So uh, make sure if you are studying your knitting, you want to account for what is your cast on so that you can try and uh, make your ending border the same as your beginning border. Okay, so we've got our working yarn on the opposite side of our uh, tail over here and uh, we want to go ahead and do a knit row a purl row make that ridge and you're going to repeat that over and over so two on the coaster and six on the dishcloth pause your video and meet me back up for the next part once you've knit your border you need to set up for the bind off row and all you need to do for the setup is just knit a row so go ahead and knit one more row Pause your video, I'll meet you back up, and I'll show you the bind off again. You can also check out our bind off video, and we also weave in tails at the end of that video as well if you need a reminder. Okay, pause your video, and I'll see you in a moment. All right, we're going to bind off. You're going to start by working the first two stitches. Knit one and knit two. And then we take the two and put it on the one and then knit off. And then we move it to that empty peg. And now we just repeat by working stitch two, peg two, moving it to one, knitting off, and moving it to the empty peg. Just continue doing that until you have one peg left and you're going to knit it one more time and I'll show you uh, down at the end. If you're working the e-wrap, you can e-wrap these stitches as you, uh, as you knit. Uh, if you're using the u-wrap knit, you just u-wrap them as you go. All right, pause your video and I'll see you at the end. All right, I'm on my last stitch and I'm knitting over and then I'm just going to wrap that one again and pull it off of the loom. cut my tail and then I'm ready to weave my tail in and I have a nice square for my coaster well this is what our dishcloth or washcloth looks like it's all stretched out from being on the loom we need to help it relax and how you relax that fiber is just to pull gently downward on it and you can see these v-shaped stitches start to pull in so these are really stretched out just pull downward and let them relax. And uh, once you do that for your project, you kind of hand block that. You can go ahead and weave in the tails. And then I would leave just a little tip of that yarn out there on both of them before you clip them off. And then go ahead and block this. You just want to run it under some water and squeeze it out gently and then lay it out and let it just uh, air dry. You can hang it over something if you wish and then um, it will get evened out. Of course, this one has not been blocked, so it's a little bit wonky right now. Let's talk about fiber. This one's made in cotton. The dishcloth is best in cotton because it can absorb that water, let you move it around, and wash some dishes really well. There's also some um, man-made fiber for some scrubby yarn that you can add to this. It kind of looks like eyelash yarn. Uh, I think it's made out of nylon. Anyway, you can add that to it or use that separately, and that's totally fine. It helps make it more scrubbable. But when it comes to the coasters, I recommend recommend using a wool or an acrylic because they don't absorb the water and therefore um, it prevents from the wood um, becoming affected. Say if you have a sweaty glass with ice, it's not going to have water come through and um, ruin your top down below. If you use wool, it's good for something that say gets a lot of high heat on it. Um, generally, coasters aren't going to get that, but if you set down something incredibly hot uh, on a coaster, um, the uh, acrylic could melt if it's um, it's at a high enough temperature, but a wool will um, absolutely um, not be affected by that. So I hope that helps you today. And our next video is going to be on the seat stitch. I can't wait for you to see that lesson. Be sure and click on the next video and in the link description below and subscribe for notifications for new lessons. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.